Hello there. So, hi guys. Um, anyone who's out there, if anyone is out there, I'm going to have another one of my little chats. Um, Saturday afternoon chats that I've been doing for a while. So I'm trying to talk to... Um, trying to talk to people who have done my training courses or some of the teachers that are on the training courses that um, co-teach with me. So if you were here last week, um, you probably saw that there was Mel Skinner who teaches the restorative yoga. Um, and today I want to speak to Jack, my friend, lovely Jack Mason Goddall, Goodall, who uh, did the yoga teacher training with me, the first yoga teacher training I ever did. And um, there he is. I'm going to wave at him, which is not what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be inviting him to come and join me. So let me see if I can do that now. <laughs> it's just you and me at the moment, Jack, anyway, so it's all right. Um, come on, Jack. Apparently, it's, you're unable to join, but I don't believe it. Come on now, inviting you. I'm going to pop on our screen now and we're going to have a little chat with so one moment, please. <laughs> oh no, he's just declined my offer. <laughs> I'm going to try again. Don't decline my offer. <laughs> okay. It's just one of those tech things. So here comes Jack. He's coming shortly to talk to us about his company. Uh, his company is... Hi, Jack. <laughs> Hello. Am I here now? You are here now. <laughs> and Very you... complicated. <laughs> <laughs> it is complicated, and I forget how to do it every single week, even though I do this every single week. Um, I forget. Uh, i just got to take my T-shirt off. just going to have a little costume change. It's quite hot in here. Um, <laughs> you've had your haircut. I have. I have. I'm taking advantage of our new freedoms. Nice. Very nice. Okay. Well, um... Good, lovely hair, and I am now cooler, so we can begin. Uh, sorry about that, Kerfuffle. Did you know that you declined my invitation to join? <laughs> I, I was pressing all kinds of buttons trying to figure out what on earth I was doing, so who knows? <laughs> oh, well, you're here, and um, yeah, so I've got Jack Mason Goodall here, Goodall here um, and he is uh, the founder of a company called Optimal. Oh, 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 you say it, you say it. <laughs> <laughs> Autism, Optimism International, and it's it's a complete tongue twister, but I still stand by it being a wonderful title. It is a wonderful title. Say it again. It's Autism, Optimism International. Perfect, perfect. And um, so people are welcome to join this um, Insta chat. If you want to join, um, then just just jump on and... Um, my followers will be notified that we're live. Your followers will be notified that we're live, Jack. And you might be watching this on IGTV later. Feel free to write any comments or ask us questions and we'll get back to you. Um, so I did write a few questions down, but um, we'll just kind of wing it as is my way. So I was saying before you came on, that I've been having these Saturday chats with, um, I'm trying to talk to some of the teachers that are um, co-teaching the 200 hour and the 300 hour um, yoga and spiritual development courses that I'm running but also want to talk to people who have already done the courses who are who, who go on to do great things hi Chris you just joined. Hey. so um, yeah you know Chris as well don't you of course I she's do. given us some part there we go um, so yeah so you're one of the people that has done the yoga teacher training you're not formally yo a yoga teacher well, you are a formally yoga teacher but you didn't go down the route of teaching yoga classes however I know for a fact it has kind of projected you into this kind of way of living so first of all I'd like you to tell us a bit about your company mm -hmm. okay so I am a psychologist I am a play therapist I'm also a yoga teacher although I don't practice as a yoga teacher um, so I founded Autism Optimism International last year just before the pandemic started actually and through it I work with families who have autistic children. Um, I, I say children. I work with kids, uh, you know, kind of as young as two, three years old, right up to adults. The oldest person I worked with was 36. And I support families in supporting their children. So our goal is to help parents get in touch with a sense of optimism for their children's futures, a sense of acceptance and a sense of love and excitement and connection with their children. And to be able to have ways to meaningfully help their children 
succeed in whatever way success ends up looking like, whether that looks like their children ending up using more communication or their children um, having less sensory dysregulation or fewer behaviors that challenge us. Um, I kind of describe my job sometimes to people as being a bit of an autism super nanny. So you are. a place where people can come with, with any kind of questions about how to support their autistic children and we will provide answers, but those answers will be based on principles of love, optimism, and also just fun, plain old fun, making learning fun for our kids and, and for us. Not fun. And I know that you, you do a lot of work with a whole family. So it's like, I know that in the past you told me about, um, you know, people coming to you for help with their children, but actually what ends up happening is a more holistic um, what package of, of help an age for the whole family and I know that um, you're a friend of our whole family and I know that to be true of my experience that you you just kind of um, you do magic for everyone in, in the family it's like you have this whole holistic approach and in fact just generally knowing what I know about you just if you're put in a group you are you're a play therapist for all of us you bring us <laughs> all together <laughs> you bring our, our inner mischief and you make us smile and you're just generally uh, and all around, yeah, but I, I do think it's that kind of whole holistic approach that you, you bring to that. And how do you think that yoga or the philosophy of yoga or the practice of yoga or the, the fact that you did a yoga teacher training, or how does yoga anyway fit in with the world of autism, do you think? Oh, how long have you got? <laughs> I've got loads of time. <laughs> so many ways. Um, by the way, I'm sorry if my uh, the screen keeps bouncing. I'm having to Phone my whole, hold my phone up and my hand is getting a little crampy. Um, <laughs> you want to get but, yourself a selfie stick? <laughs> oh yes, I should, I should. Um, okay, so I think just as we can kind of divide yoga into there's the physical practice and then there's the philosophical and spiritual practice, I see yoga's implication in the world of autism in, in those two terms as well. So I think yoga just as kind of a, a physical form of exercise is incredibly soothing for our nervous systems and obviously a lot of people on the autism spectrum and actually I think a lot of us neurotypical people have nervous systems that sometimes get a bit out of whack and so just the physical asana aspect of yoga can be incredibly soothing and grounding for a system that's feeling very dysregulated so whether that is helping an autistic person to do an asana practice to take care of their nervous system that's really helpful but actually also for parents because the experience of having someone with autism in your life can be incredibly stressful and challenging so a yoga practice is a great way to take care of yourself so that you have a greater capacity to show up for your children but then i think if we get into you know what my real passion is about yoga and i think what yours is too steph and why i love learning from you is it's everything behind the asana practice. It's about the spirituality and the philosophy and how that informs how we live our lives. To me, yoga essentially is about acceptance and connection and about um, having a system to inform how we move through the world and how we move through our interactions and relationships with other people so that as much as possible, those can be based on like real love and real acceptance. And so there was this wonderful parallel. I started working with autistic children actually at pretty much the same time that I started practicing yoga. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and just as my yoga practice originally was very kind of physically based, so my, <clears throat> excuse me, my work with children was very results based. But then right. the more I worked with children, the more I saw just the healing power of just holding space for someone and just accepting them and believing in them and holding an optimistic attitude for who they are, how that in itself is profoundly healing. Mm -hmm. So I also kind of had this breakthrough in my yoga practice too, of thinking like, oh, there's a lot more going on here than just how high can I get my leg, right? Um, and so uh, one of the things I really appreciated about doing the, the TTC, the teacher training course with you, was learning more about the actual kind of spiritual and philosophical system behind the physical practice of yoga and then almost kind of having that as something to to weave into the work that I do with families so like yes there's this concept and there's this concept and there's this concept and if we live by them and if we embody them then we will treat others in a more respectful more accepting way which then creates such an amazing avenue for real change and real growth to happen 
Amazing, amazing. Long answer to your question. Oh, I love it. But I know because um, I've worked with autistic children in the past, and, and um, it is a world that I really love. Um, you know, that's a, a lovely world. And also, I grew up in in uh, a rest home. <laughs> My parents uh, ran a rest home, and it was full. Um, there were many kind of uh, categories for elderly care. So we had basically all types of old people living in our house. So including, you know people with mental health uh, issues, um, dementia, Alzheimer's. And there was always this kind of, you know, world of there's this kind of sense of trying to make people better yeah. or meeting people where they are. And I know I've spoken to you um, about, you know, helping families with autism. If you're trying to help them make their child normal, then it's going to be a very difficult world. Um, whereas, you know, this whole philosophy of like meeting a person where you are, this acceptance, this kind of... Um, you are perfect where you are, which, you know, I really take from some of the philosophy of yoga is just then that, that gives you that way in and often it, it just changes the mindset. And I'm sure that can be totally life for a family um, in that situation. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I think, you know, whether it's about your yoga practice being just kind of noticing, okay, downward dog feels a bit like this today, or my calves feel this tight today. So I'm, you know, we are so accustomed to trying to push against that and try to push through that. And yeah. I am as guilty of that as the next man, but I also notice that doesn't ultimately lead to me feeling more peaceful. And if yeah. I'm not feeling more peaceful, then I'm less likely to grow and embrace something new. And it's absolutely the same with our children, you know, whether they have a label of autism or, or any anything else any way in which our children sometimes challenge us and are not the kids that we thought that we were going to have i think the question that i often offer to families is how does it feel to be fighting against who your child is regardless mm. of whether it's working regardless of whether it's leading to kind of new skills like does that feel good and surely the the biggest desire for any parent must be to just love and enjoy your child like deep oh. down, is that what it's all about, right? That we just want to Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. So how much yoga, meditation, nidra, uh, philosophy do you reckon is involved in your day-to-day? -day? I know you do some courses for parents, like initial, I know you were doing, was it, is it six or 12 week initial courses and then yeah. there's deeper yeah. courses. Um, and I know that you offer meditations, uh, daily meditations on some of your courses. How much um, has your yoga passion infused your work, do you think? Oh, that's really interesting. I would say, you know, there, there are definitely some families who are already kind of, you know, interested in yoga, interested, interested in these concepts, where I talk about it very explicitly. You know, I really do give them kind of specific guided meditations or nidras or talk about pranayama. Um, with other families where maybe it's not something that they already know about, I'm not gonna I'm, I'm i'm not here to be kind of an evangelist and to proselytize and try to convert people to this this system but we can take some of those concepts and we can give them to what people in ways that are really accessible so just saying okay right if you feel really really stressed then let's do some deep diaphragmatic breathing yeah and and regardless of whether we're going to call that pranayama or not it's it's going to feel nice it's going to yeah. calm down um so I would say, you know, sometimes it's really explicit, sometimes it's implicit. But I would say the, the foundations of yoga, as, as it's described in, say, like in the Bhagavad Gita, where we're talking about taking action, because we have to take action, right? If we have a child, we want to support them. But allowing that action to come from an unattached place that there's no right or wrong, there's no good or bad, there's just us doing the best we can and whatever comes of that, that is interwoven into the very fabric of, of what I do every day with families. Amazing. And in a way, that's kind of like how, for me, I can't really separate yoga from life anyway anymore because it's kind of like, it's just common sense to me, yoga. It's like, I don't even think I do yoga anymore. <laughs> I just think like, I just it's live my life and deal with the shit that comes up as it needs to be dealt with. But it's, I guess it's the same, you know, it's like you're feeling stressed, have a deep diaphragmatic breath, 
or um you know would you like to learn to control your prana well let's do some kapalabhati you know it's like yeah. actually it's the same isn't it so i just yeah. want to say we've got some people here um visiting us i've waved at a few of you thank you so much for joining us and if you have any questions that you want to ask jack or me but jack probably um uh, it's better to ask the questions um just drop us a comment um we can answer your questions and um so jack i wanted to say that you you were in my first ever yoga teacher training yeah, course I don't know. you are kind of responsible for me writing the yoga teacher training because um, I'm not sure who if you know or whoever's listening knows but I um, I knew that I had to write a 200 hour yoga teacher training program but I resisted for so long because they have a really bad name and it was at a time when um, well it's still a time when you know we are there are so many 200 hour programs and they're just being churned out all the time and you know 200 hours it's such bad name like how can you possibly be how can you possibly know anything about yoga after 200 hours la, 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 la. and it's still going on like that um but i could also see that i could help hopefully um kind of be part of the solution to that as well i saw that um uh, katie snell just joined gives us gets us lots of hearts and calls us lovely human um but i also saw that i could be part of the solution because um what I was seeing was a lot of physical based uh, yoga practices, which were then, you know, in turn leading to these problems because they weren't really, you know, it was all body based. It was very um, injury prone and not really giving the full story of what yoga was. So I really, I knew that I had to write this 200 hour program and I knew that I had to write it for people like you um, who, who wanted to receive it. And, you know, so that I could kind of, shape a few yoga teachers that would be part of you know creating this new paradigm of yoga hopefully I mean that sounds like really <laughs> like big-headed of me but you know in a in a humble way I, but I kept resisting I kept resisting kept resisting I uh, but it was kind of bubbling up inside me and um, I remember I think you came on a Reiki one yoga um, <laughs> holiday and we were yeah. walking in the Kalanki you remember that mad like in the, uh, in the beautiful mountain area of, of Atri and uh, you just kind of earnestly looked at me and said you know I would take that training if you if you wrote it I would be on that training and I think at that point and that, that the reason I got the memory so so strongly I think at that point you broke me and it was just like it's not about me I need to get this training out there I need to be I need to just kind of you know suck it up and get it out and I think that you are a really important piece of this puzzle because I know that a lot of yoga teachers kind of um, they, they finish their training and they don't really know or a lot of trainings will train teachers to just be able to teach in a yoga studio mm. that's, their, that's their big focus but a lot of the people that, have, you know, want to do a deeper training may never want to actually teach yoga. Or some will say they won't want to teach yoga, but they'll be pulled into it. You know, people, word gets round and people find out you're a yoga teacher. And before you know it, you, you've got your auntie and your sister or your workmates in a tiny little room doing some sun salutations. But I think um, also some of the people that take my training never really formally become yoga teachers. Mm -hmm. But it shapes or it helps create or it helps... Uh, keep them true to themselves on this journey and you are a prime example of that so do you want to I'll just answer this question and then I'm going to say um, what you feel about that so um Karina from Sacred Space Yoga who we also had on she was one of the yoga teachers that has opened a yoga studio in a pandemic so it's another example of the amazing <laughs> that do this training she says she feels very lucky to know us both. Great work, Jack. So glad that I nudged you. I'm really glad I nudged you too. So what do you think um, in response to that? Because, you know, some people might say it's a waste of money if you don't become a yoga teacher or it's a waste of money and time if you're not going to then get it back in, in working for the yoga machine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and I remember that conversation too. And then I remember nudging you a couple more times afterwards be like are you doing it are you doing it when's it happening <laughs> and, and it was really fascinating because I can I can very clearly remember that I never had a strong desire to end up teaching in a yoga studio like it it, it never came from that place although at, at certain points I've thought that that's something I might explore but for me I was so excited to deepen my own practice of yoga um 
and and to kind of go through you i remember when we talked about it steph you like i i really felt we were incredibly on the level because we were you were talking about it as you know i want to help people evolve i want to help people find who they really are and go through the transformative process of of what yoga can really be and i was like yes I want that. So, you know, I wanted to deepen my own practice. I wanted to deepen my own evolution. And I was also really aware of the tie-in and the relevancy to the work that I do. So kind of all of that together, I was like, yeah, of course. Why, why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I want to do this? That's amazing. And how do you think it did? Do you think it did like push you forward? I like, I always kind of think about, I always talk about these flicks, these like universal flicks that you get if you hang out with me or if you kind of do any kind of spiritual work, you get these little flicks and it's the universe like going, oh, yes, yeah, flick, yeah, flick. Yeah. Like just projecting you forward and shaping you. Like how do you think um, the teacher training and, and what aspects of the teacher training in particular do you think projected you or gave you that flick forward? Mm -hmm. Well, I wouldn't <laughs> describe it as a flick. I would say that the universe put me in a catapult. It okay. <laughs> just kind of fired me out there. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I was reflecting on that a little bit earlier, and I think that there were maybe a couple of things. Um, one is something I think, Steph, that you taught incredibly powerfully was the idea of yoga as an embodied practice. Mm -hmm. Because I think definitely in, in the kind of um, like Western psychological tradition that I come from, which is incredibly cerebral, and incredibly head-based and it's a way of kind of processing what's happening in our lives that can be quite disconnected you know we do a lot of stuff thinking and talking about what's happening for us and often that can be yes you know I'm going to sit here with my, my client <laughs> on their reclining couch and um and that can be really helpful in terms of figuring some stuff out but I think transformation happens in in our feelings like hi Tracy um okay. And so, so much of what you were teaching us was about let's, let's embody these feelings. Transformation happens when we are embodying what we are feeling, even if it feels like shit, you know, even if it feels incredibly dark and incredibly difficult. And actually, I think that that was a real theme in, in, in the teacher training class that I was in, was us learning to really embody and confront and inhabit darker parts of who we are and darker parts of our experience which are often brushed off in this very kind of like love and light wellness yoga yeah. kind of culture that we <laughs> created here um so for me that that was really transformative um and and i think too you know this isn't necessarily something that i bring into my work but it's something that i bring into my own personal life and my spiritual practice which is a real profound appreciation of of the chakra system and working with the chakras on on a daily basis as a way of continuing my evolution. Oh, it's so powerful, isn't it? Yeah, this is something that I was really, I mean, I'm really drawn to it. Anyone who knows about me knows that I'm a chakra mad. And um, part of that, <laughs> I'm like the most chakra obsessed person in the world, probably, probably not actually. Again, another grandiose uh, statement by Steph. <laughs> like, I'm going to change the world, my training and my shack work. No, but it's a very, very important part because it was so embodied in me how, how transformative it is. And this whole kind of thing that you were saying, basically um, touching on spiritual bypassing, which is very present in the yoga world, um, and I'm probably very present in, you know, um, psychology world as well, in a way. But this kind of, yeah. when you work with the chakras, you're really you know, you start at the bottom. Well, how I teach is you start at the bottom and you own that stuff and there's no way you can kind of get up without avoiding what you are and your human presence and, you know, all the, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, and there's no way you can kind of transcend that. There's no way that you can move forward or, you know, be be any any use or service to anyone until you've, you know, at least recognize that and if possible, kind of deal with some of it if it needs to be dealt with, but also you're perfect as you are, <laughs> NB. Um, so yeah, I think really, really important. So that was a, a major, and still is a, a major part of the training because I run the training over a seven month period and we do focus on one, one chakra a month. And, you know, now I teach that I realize that that didn't need to be just a part of the yoga teacher training. So I run that course on its own 
I did run it as a part of Reiki training as well because it works so well if you're on a healing journey. And then I realized, actually, this is a damn good journey in itself. And so run that journey apart. You don't have to even do yoga to appreciate that because it's this wonderful system of um, just kind of connecting to who you are and em the, this embodiment of, of who you are and moving through your planes of consciousness, if that makes any sense. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's a major part, I think, of the transformative aspect. So I always thought that a teacher training and yoga, I mean, it's always going to teach you how to teach um, because it's a teacher training and it's always going to teach you the elements. Um, but the other aspect of a teacher training um, in yoga has to be the transformative effects of yoga and that's not just in my teacher yeah. training that is if you do yoga ever you will be you know putting yourself through you can't do yoga without it somehow transforming you in some way and it's not you know in the way that maybe you'd expect but it is quite transformational and I think that that's the other piece of the puzzle is that you may end up being a yoga teacher but you will definitely end up having a clearer idea of where you're going, what you're doing, who you are. Um, you know, sometimes you realize, you know, the things you didn't know about yourself. And maybe there's a few dark times in a yoga teacher training when you don't really like what you start seeing inside. Um, but it's a process. And I think that that journey of yoga teacher training is is transformational, whether you whether you teach yoga ever again or not. It is this transformational um true so I'd say that even if you didn't want to you know be a yoga teacher it will transform your career whatever it is just because of that kind of self-inquiry which is one of the, the biggest elements in yoga philosophy is like asking yourself who who am I what am I doing here you know which is kind of you know what what we do as children really who am I what am I doing here but it's kind of drilled out of us I don't think about silly things like that you know let's think about maths and stats and all of that rubbish but actually those are the big questions that you know we have to come back to it's funny I, I end up training people you know who have who have grown up normally to go back to asking those more simple questions in in life and you know that are drilled out of us by by normal society so what, what do you think about um you know, the idea of, you know, autism being, the world of autism being kind of, you know, free of all that, in a way, that kind of, you're not, mm -hmm. you're not look, that kind of stuff isn't drilled out of you. You know, you're, you're so open, maybe, as an autistic um, mind, you haven't yeah. had that society's pressure. Yeah, um, I think it's, it's just such a fascinating topic. And, you know, obviously, I'm very mindful, I'm not speaking as an autistic person. So, I, you know, if there is anybody autistic watching this who has a different experience, please, please do do share Come in. Speak for you. <laughs> um, but and, and equally, you know, I I can't speak for all autistic people. I can speak for the the people who I've interacted with, spoken to, worked with. But there is something about you know, as a neurotypical person, I am aware of how much I feel um, constricted and defined by the expectations that society puts on me and the identities that society puts on me and who I need to be to meet those identities, who I need to be to be acceptable in the social context that I'm in. And a lot of the autistic people who I work with or who I meet just don't have that same need to buy mm -hmm. into all of these social constructs that you and I might as neurotypical people, whether that is to do with sexual identity, whether it's to do with gender identity, whether it's to do with what is a right or an inappropriate thing to say in a social space. Um, I, I, I just love how so many of the autistic people I work with give themselves such complete permission to be completely, completely authentically themselves. And what's interesting is, you know, the, I would say kind of the mainstream social idea is that autism is, is the, uh, the divergent thing. It's like the, I guess in some ways we might even think of it as like the, the wrong way of being. We have the right way, that's the wrong way. They need to come and be more like us. And I look at how neurotic we get, how stressed we get, how unable to be authentically ourselves we get. And so many autistic people that I work with don't have those same pressures. Like, sure, th there's also a lot of very difficult stuff that they are contending with too. So I don't want to paint this sort of perfect yeah. picture of it. But 
in terms of just that ability to be yourself without questioning or feeling shamed um yeah that can be that can be a really powerful thing that we can learn from from autistic people absolutely i do feel that i feel like i learned so much from from my work with um with autistic children when i when i was lucky enough to to do that work i absolutely i loved it because it's like you opening your eyes to um social acceptance levels you have this sudden lens like you know, oh my goodness, you know, we've just put this on ourselves. We've decided this is what, the way to behave. This is the way to speak. And, you know, it's, it, it, it seems so freeing to have someone challenge that, you know, it's like, and we've kind of learning yoga. If yoga is freedom, then, you know, give me some of that sort of thing. It, 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 that's in a way that's a freedom. And, and yeah, obviously there's other things going on once they, you know, they, you know, someone with autism may have other, other issues. It's not, all rosy obviously but um in that way I, I find it so fascinating that that is that's so free and yeah. so authentic which we can we can spend our whole life striving for um and we are kind of held held back so much I think you know a lot of what I teach is about learning the conditionings that we yeah. have our minds conditioned we have cultural conditioning we have you know, conditions from our gender, from gender identity as we grow up, from our family, you know, so much of that stuff is already put on us and learning to kind of, you know, not just give it all up, but just to see clearly why you think what you think, why you say what you say, why you identify how you identify, um, because it's all conditioned behavior. And yeah. that's fascinating when you start unpicking that, you know, and I think work with um, you know, I guess neurodiverse or just hanging out, you know, a lot of my friends are neurodiverse. I'm probably neurodiverse. And so just kind of, you know, being in that environment, just seeing different ways of um ways of living is always gonna be you know, just like how traveling to other cultures is always gonna be eye opening. Exactly. You know, when you think when you're told that, you know, this is there's only one way to live and one way to think and one thing to eat on Christmas Day. I mean, already being vegetarian, you're a bit diverse, aren't you? Because it's like, what do you eat on Christmas Day? Right. <laughs> Crazy right. things like that. Like whatever I fancy. Um, but you know, we do, we don't even realise that there's this set thing that you eat this on this day and you think this and you dress like this and to just kind of open your mind a little bit by hanging out with different minds, uh, going to different places, uh, or by doing yoga teacher training, <laughs> you can just kind of open up. And I think that's, that's the most fascinating thing to me. Well, and I just want to springboard off the back of that for a second, because I think that that's, that is a, a value that you teach so powerfully in the teacher training, because I think, you know, in essence, what we're saying here is, building a relationship with difference is one of the most powerful things that we can ever do in our lives because it gives us that chance to confront our own expectations of ourselves of others it gives us that chance to look at, okay where do we find challenge with difference um and i was thinking as you were talking steph i was just thinking about how so often in yoga classes that i've taken um there's no mention of difference whether it is to do with people with differently abled bodies or whether it is to do with um people with um just different physical capacities. And I so clearly remember as you were teaching the TTC for every single post, you'd be like, and here's option one, and here's option two, and here's option three, and here's option four. And even just that, where we're, you were so able to deeply integrate, here are all these different ways of doing this post, and they're all equal, they are all so useful, but we need to know them and we need to offer them so that we're yeah. catering to difference. I think that the you really what's the phrase you walk your talk <laughs> thank you oh thank you i'm just gonna read this comment that um our lovely katie said she said i do want to stay and watch this but my kids are interrupting so i'm gonna watch it later love you both you are wonderful i would definitely do your training if you babysit my kids and <laughs> <to> watch it. <laughs> you're on <laughs> except for the kids bit i've got enough of my own thank you i'll do the babysitting <laughs> katie I'm good with kids. <laughs> it's a deal. It's a deal. So, um, Jack, uh, this has been amazing. And I just want to big up uh, Jack. He's amazing. He lives in Bristol. His company is Autism Optimism International. Did I get it right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Jack, you're, you're just an inspiration to me. You are my philosophical guide in all this as well. Because it's, 
you know, I teach this stuff, but it's, it's also, it's, I think when you teach this stuff, you're confronted with it a lot. You, you are challenged to actually walk your talk and it's not easy, is it? It's, it's, it's not all rosy. I think also when you, when you walk a path like this, um, there are so many challenges. It's almost like you have to have the challenges so that you can um, speak from, you know, a little bit of wisdom. And I know that you and I, you know, we've both been through a lot of stuff in our yoga career. Mm-hmm. And it's, you, know, you kind of have to keep uh, coming back to the philosophy and it, and it kind of gets you through. And I think, I think that's the main thing that we have in common is that we are trying to integrate the philosophy um, and, you know, yeah, realizing yeah. that it can actually help you and bring you forward. Yeah. Do, what do you think, what would you give um, anyone who is thinking of doing um, the, the 200 hour yoga teacher training? What would you, what advice would you give uh, to them now? Other <laughs> <than that>. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, I I would be really honest and I would say, look, if you are not interested in personal evolution and going through (laughs) some quite challenging experiences, but coming out more resilient and more powerful and more self-knowledgeable on the other side, if you're not into any of that, then this is not the GTC for you. (laughs) But I think there are so many people who are into that. And if you are feeling that yoga as it currently tends to be presented in the West is not giving you what you feel like you really need if you feel like there's more if you want to be part of the 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 change then absolutely 100 percent do this i cannot recommend step highly enough this is why it took <laughs> for so many years to create this ttc yes why it's why it exists and um and you know we have a little autism chunk in the 300 hour as well i'm sure that you'll teach that one day um, we have special yoga, Jyoti, Joe Manuel, who, who does a lot of work with autistic kids. So the 300 hour, if you, if you are already a yoga teacher and you want to kind of go even more into uh, sort of a cross between um, advanced yoga training and yoga therapy, I guess. We have a lot of mo- m- uh, modules of kind of great ways of bringing yoga to more people. And one of them is, you know, um, a, a special yoga for autism. And it, she does... Um, it's specifically for children in this context, but Special Yoga Global, uh, Global does a lot of work. And I expect that um, Autism Optimism International will also uh, feature heavily in courses to come. Tell us um, what you've got coming up. Have a really good plug. Where can we find you? What are you doing? How can people get involved with your stuff, Jack? Yes. The show is yours. So, um, The best way to get in touch with me is through my website, which is www.autismoptimisminternational.com. You you can hit me up here on Instagram. This is actually, I I tend not to use this account terribly much. Um, So the other place I'd really recommend looking me up is on Facebook. Uh, My profile there is Jack Mason Goodall. And I, I use that for my work, to talk about my work, to give kind of, ideas, tips, things like that. In terms of things that are coming up, I am running a series of online support groups for parents with autistic children. Um, Absolutely big part of that is about helping come up with practical strategies to support our kids and help them learn skills that will be useful to them. But equally, so much of it is about helping parents build a really supportive community with other parents who are in the same situation as them. And then within that community for us to really do kind of the, the emotional work on how challenging it can be to have a child with different and significant needs. So th- those are very, very, very powerful groups. And um, we're gonna be opening up more spaces for those in a few months. I'm also gonna be putting together some more one-off workshops on play therapy and how we can use play therapy to promote relationships, promote um, kind of skill growth for, for our children. And there may well be something at some point coming along the lines about a, a more kind of explicit integration of yoga into this whole system. I've got lots and lots of ideas of all these things. So uh, yeah, be in touch. 
Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for joining us. And again, if you're watching this on the IGTV, just drop us a comment. Um, if you tag uh, me or Jack, um, we will keep, we will continue to get back to you. And um, we will see you. Thank you so much, Jack. We'll thank see you so soon. I'll end this now and I'll see you in person soon for a hug. Yeah. All right. <laughs> when it's legal. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>